right, it looks like we'll go ahead and get started here. So, good morning, everyone. I'm so excited to welcome you to today's webinar, Management Reporter Replacement, Moving to Next-Gen Reporting with BI360. My name is Olivia Johnston, and I'm an account executive here at FMT Consultants, and I am joined by Alex Geller with Solver. Before we dive in, I'd like to take a few moments to give you a brief introduction of our company. Here at FMT, we have successfully completed over 1,500 projects. We have been in business since 1995 and recently celebrated our 22nd year anniversary. We are Southern California's leading provider of Microsoft integrated solutions and have over 250 clients in both the United States and Canada. Our team has significantly grown over the years with currently over 80 team members both in Northern San Diego as well as Los Angeles. At FMT, we pride ourselves on our five core values integrity, service excellence, collaboration, innovation, and passion. But why choose FMT? With the combination of talent, experience, and methodology, we are fully dedicated to the success of your company. We offer a wide array of services pertaining to ERP, CRM, SharePoint, BI, and Office 365. In addition to having extremely experienced consultants, we also have a dedicated help desk that offers ongoing training and support after projects are completed. Here are just a few of the clients we get the privilege to work with on a daily basis. And of course, we hope to one day add your company to this list. I'm also excited to announce that we're having our fifth annual Enverge Technology Conference on May 25th, which will comprise of 24 educational sessions on Microsoft Dynamics 365, CRM and GP, NetSuite, SAP Business by Design, SharePoint, BI Solutions, Office 365, and Azure Cloud. We we'll also have some keynote speakers as well as some great hands-on workshops, so this is something you definitely don't want to miss out on. Please see our website or feel free to contact me for more info on how to register. Now I'm going to hand it over to Alex, but before I do, if at any time during the presentation you have any questions, feel free to type them into the comment box. We will be monitoring it during the entire presentation. Thank you. Alex, you want to go ahead and take over? Thank you, Olivia, and thank you everyone for joining today. Let me just move my slide here. Uh, yeah, just to kind of quickly introduce myself and outline uh, the agenda. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm a manager and senior solution architect here at Solver. And today's session is going to be focused on replacing management reporter. Uh, I'll actually build out a few reports, uh, explain how they are run in, in our software, and show you the di different methodologies for deployment. Uh, a little bit about us, so Solver BI 360 uh, is a reporting, budgeting, and dashboarding software. Uh, we're in the Gartner list for core performance management, and we're really the only tool in that space that's Excel-based uh, and that has a live integration to Dynamics, which lets us replace management reporter. And we'll take a look at what the live actually means when we look at the uh, demonstration slide. Uh, but before I do, you know, just high level, uh, really the value proposition for what we do is it enables finance and accounting teams to be able to create their templates uh, as opposed to going and asking IT for help. Also, in today's session, we'll focus primarily on the reporting piece, uh, but just know that we are a full suite uh, that can offer budgeting, dashboarding, and data warehousing for combining your various data sources into one place. So while today's focus is going to be specifically on replacing management reporter, eventually as either your company grows or your needs scale, uh, you can absolutely add modules at a later phase. Why Management Reporter and why are we replacing it? So Microsoft announced that they're no longer continuing development on Management Reporter. What that means, and I want to be clear about it, yes, they're going to continue supporting it um, you know, because they have to, they have so many users, but they're really not going to allocate a lot of effort uh, into continuing and making it better. So if you don't like Management Reporter or you're thinking about you know, switching, just note that, oops, sorry about that, it's not going to get better anytime soon. Uh, and the natural question is, well, what are they going to do about it? You know, as of now, they've left it open to companies like us to kind of fill in that gap. Um, 
And some of the other issues with them are, you know, their data mark creates a lot of performance problems. Uh, with us, from a technology perspective, it's a um, live connection. And for other data sources, it's a data warehouse. Uh, and that offsets a lot of the performance issues. And it's difficult to format, I've heard. Uh, and with BI360, we're Excel-based. So all the formulas and formatting that you're used to in Excel, you can leverage with creating your templates. And there's no subledger reporting in MR. Uh, whereas with BI360, you can drill back into the subledger, you can drill back into you know, your journal entry, your debits, credits, and you can actually build out your payable and receivable report. And we'll go and take a look at a few uh, during today's presentation. And then the functionality is not dynamic. So if you add a new account, you have to go back and update it and manage your reporter um, here. All the rows, columns, and sheets are dynamic. So when you add fields into uh, your Great Plain system, it will automatically show up in the report. And then finally, not scalable. So great, you have Management Reporter. That's one tool. Then a lot of times people say, all right, well, for other data sources, you know, we have something like it's Crystal or SQL. That's two. For Subledger, we have SSRS reports. So that's three reporting tools. And then typically they have another solution for budgeting. So that's about four or five tools that your organization has to manage without our suite. With our suite, we in essence have one portal for you to be able to handle all of that. Uh, so it creates a lot you know, easier process with integrations because everything's naturally integrated. And it really gives you one place to view all of this. So without further ado, you know, this is kind of the very last slide uh, that I want to show before uh, I proceed and kind of give you an illustration of how uh, the MR replacement works. But just know that the BI360 suite has four key components. So it has reporting, uh, budgeting, dashboarding, and data warehousing. And today we'll focus on the reporting live from Great Plains, the MR replacement piece. Uh, but just to give you an illustration of how you know this does all work together, you know, right here is a live MR piece. And I say that word live, and a lot of vendors say, uh, but what exactly does that mean for us? What it means is when you post a journal entry, you'll immediately see that in the reporting tool. And that's because we worked in the dynamic space for a very long time. Um, and that's our target market. You know, consequently, we've partnered with uh, you know, companies such as FMT uh, that, that you know, can recommend us and know that we have all of the integrations already built out to GP. Next is, you know, we originally did this, which is just reporting off GP. But then our customers said, hey, what about other data sources? And a lot of our customers said, we have payroll and ADP, something not even Dynamics or we have a proprietary system. Well, what you can do at either immediately or as a phase two is you can load in those other data sources into this data warehouse and then using the exact same Excel-based reporting tool, create reports across your different data sources. So it can truly scale into being an enterprise-wide reporting tool. I'm going to pause here for a sec, and just because I did see there are some um, mostly finance accounting people in the room and not technical. This data warehouse, it's not at all technical. It's basically meant for finance professionals to be able to do things such as um, you know, handle multi-currency, handle allocations, you can set up elimination companies in here, and handle, handles consolidation. And you know, you'll be able to just drag and drop and clicking buttons, uh, do things such as tag accounts, uh, you know, create trees, create hierarchies, and so on. So this is something you know, we specifically built, built keeping um, finance and, and accounting in mind. And the typical deployment of this is really a month or so, uh, and that's just creating the templates. You know, this is a quick deployment and doesn't really have the original kind of scary connotation that a typical data warehouse has. And if you already have a data warehouse, great. This is just a subset of the data specifically uh, for reporting and budgeting. Which leads us to the next point. 
Uh, after you're done creating your reports, what you can do is add some functionality and then turn it into a budgeting template. Uh, and then last, you know, great, you create all of this in Excel, but you can deploy it on the web. And that's the last part, which is this dashboard. If you're using PowerBI.com or plan on using it, great, we don't by any means replace it. It can actually sit directly on top of our data warehouse. But what you would use this for is to view your reports and then potentially input data. And we're not going to focus on budgeting today, uh, but if that is an interest to you, uh, we are going to have a webinar same time next week, uh, so next Friday at, at uh, 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time uh, on budgeting and forecasting. Well, we'll go in a lot more detail about how to create an input form, um, you know, how to deploy it, how to manage workflows so you can see who input data, when it was input, and so on. Okay. So what I want to do is start off with you know, really a finance accounting perspective, which is, you know, how is this stuff built from scratch? And what I'll do is I'll build out a uh, trial balance and then maybe just turn it into um, a P&L. Then uh, we'll kind of switch gears a little bit um, and I'll show you, you know, a few more subledger reports live from Excel. Uh, and then, you know, we can talk about how to deploy it. And then we'll switch perspectives to the end user, which is the person you know that's just going to be viewing the templates. Okay. So first, you know, to start off, you're saying, "Great, you know, how do I build it?" And let's compare it to Management Reporter because that's what this session's all about. And to do that, I'll go and open uh, Excel. Uh, and from reporting, just note that if you did have an Excel template and want to continue building on top of it, you can select New Current. In our example here, uh, we'll select New Blank because we're building out a brand new one from scratch. Now, we will log into uh, the Great Plains Fabricam test database, and that's just the standard one that Microsoft provides, uh, but this is where you know, when you go and install the software without doing any integrations or anything else out of the box, uh, you're going to have access to all of the modules that you guys use um, inside of Great Plains. And the way it works, on the left-hand side, you know, you're going to have all the modules. You're going to do your report creation in Excel. Uh, and over here on the left-hand side, if we kind of further explore this, Here's the finance module. Uh, you're going to go in and have your, uh, you know, when you open the account string, your own segments here, right? So your own account. If you have a, maybe a location set a department, you'll see that instead. And you'll also have access uh, to all of the modules that you use in Great Plains. And what I want to do is open up finance. And for our example, you know, just to keep it simple, we want to go out and build a trial balance. So I'm typing that in Excel. And on the row, we want to add the account. We want to put the description here. Uh, and maybe we want to do the you know, year date amount, last year to date, along with the variance. So notice here, you know, I'm not going to spend a lot of time formatting, but this is all done in Excel. And the advantage of that is the learning curve is much lower uh, as compared to other tools that aren't Excel based. And you know, the startup time and the barrier to entry with the learning curve is really nominal. Uh, we'll typically go on site, train you, and then you should be able to create these templates yourself. And when I say we, uh, FMT you know, is trained on, on the software. Uh, and also knows your ERP requirements. So they're actually at a much better position to train and implement uh, than the vendor itself. And next, I'll go in, and now you're saying, all right, well, how is this different than Excel, right? And the way it's different is you're going to go and say, you know, account, drag and drop on the row. And what that does, you know, there's three concepts, row, column, uh, or sheet. And what I'll do here is create a uh, selection group on the row, and then I'll go into this layout editor, 
should be pretty straightforward and say, you know, what accounts do I want to see on the row? Now, my example, you know, I want to go in and since this is a trial balance, look at all of the accounts except my nines, which are my unit accounts. Uh, I want to pause here for a second because this is an extremely important concept. We use ranges in our software, which means that when you add a new account, let's say you go in and add account 8455, right in between here where my cursor is, inside of Great Plains, it is going to automatically show up in the report because I selected this. And to that point, uh, you know, if I uh, want to go in and say, well, I don't want that to happen, then you unclick this, all right, and then it'll just select the accounts. But in our example, I do want this, uh, and even more, you know, the account in me here, if I add a new account, let's say I add 8999, I want that to appear, right? So I'll go in and input that. Uh, if you add new accounts at a later date to make sure your trial balance actually balances. I'll click OK, uh, and the rest should be really you know, pretty much straightforward and logical. Now that I'm done filling in the accounts I want, uh, I also want to see the description of that account in the report. Uh, I want to go down here and drag and drop, you know, period change, the activity. And then last concept, uh, I need to differentiate your date and last year date on the column. And the way I do that is by adding functions. And these are all predefined, but you can build your own. And I'm just showing year date and last year date as an example. You know, for you, you can do this with quarter one compared to quarter two of last, quarter one of last year, whatever your preference, exact same concept. And I'll go and say, you know, year date and last year date, and then I'm done, right? The variance here. That is just an Excel formula. And I'm using a simple subtraction, yeah, but if you have if statements, VLOOKUP, HLOOKUP, you can go and use all of that. Uh, also, just I'm seeing kind of a few people join uh, late. To reiterate, what we're looking at here is from the perspective of uh, the power user. The power user in our terminology is the person that's creating this template from scratch. And that said, we'll add some light formatting. Uh, we could add a total here, you know, and I'll, I'll use uh, our own functionality. But you can use Excel, and we'll say, here's the total. Um, then we'll go and just add some, you know, light formatting here. Maybe expand the um, you know, width a little bit. Uh, and now we're ready to build to, to run this report. Okay. And what I mean by that is now you as a power user decide, all right, you know, do I want to push this up to the portal, which we'll take a look at in a second, or do I just want to leave it all in Excel? And right now we'll do all Excel. And we'll go and say, you know, great, I'm a business user. The only thing I care about is just selecting the current month. So I'll say, you know, I want to see June of 2014, click a button, um, and now, you know, all the accounts, the descriptions, year date, last year date, um, expands on the row. If I go and add a new account, say add account four, you know, 2415 inside of the ERP, click a button, and it would automatically appear. And during month end, it really does immediately appear uh, you know, as opposed to having any sort of delay, which is a huge upside. Now, what else can you do with this template? Uh, you can drill back into both the GL and the subledger. So if I'm looking at this and I'm saying, well, you know, I want to actually go and drill back, and this is a lot of times where accountants get really excited, um, it will go through and fetch the vendor, the full account string, and so on. So in our example, we have the account string and the currency, you know, the customer number, customer name, and continue scrolling over here. You know, we have the vendor, journal entry, and like I said, subledger information. And this is clearly not something something a management reporter can do. Okay. Now let's say, hey, what if a user goes in and makes a mistake? By the way, you know, 
just note, it's not Excel in the sense of, you know, it's now linked to a database. All you have to do is click a button and the report reappears. Uh, and also, right, next month you go in, it's now July, click a button, click a run, and then all of this updates to show you current data. Let's go back and build one more um, template. Not template, excuse me, but add some functionality to it to say, hey, I want this to run specific by uh, department or division. You know, so I'll go back, and this is really the last and final um, concept in, in building out your templates. And so what I'll do is I'll go and say, great, I want to see the division, drag and drop, and I did that on the sheet, and I want to create a parameter. Parameter is something the end user can select, uh, and it governs the entire report. So I'll go and say, great, click uh, new parameter. Notice how here I'm just clicking buttons, so nothing is coding. This is all meant for you to understand with training. It's not meant for any, to know any SQL uh, or any proprietary difficult language. So I'll say, please choose division, um, click next. Here's the style. We'll just keep the lookup at it, but you, know, you can customize it. And one thing I actually will do is I'll do the sheet per value. A uh, powerful button, and what it does is if you select more than one division, it'll actually give you a separate tab for each one. And let me go up here a bit, maybe add some, just from formatting perspective, add some few rows, and then go and say, you know, I want the division description in the uh, report. What's the point of this? Well, the point is, now the business user goes and says, all right, well, I want to see July uh, specific for sales data. And they run it, and now they see specifically sales data. However, if they go in and say, I want to see sales data, administration, and consulting training, and click OK. So now, you know, three divisions, and click this button. By the way, you can look at the speed. I'm going to build this report um, in front of your eyes, and this takes you know, three seconds to run. And now it gives you a tab for administration, you know, a tab for sales, uh, and a tab for consulting training. Okay? All with the ability of going in here and saying, right click and drill down. And I'll show you the summary, which is the roll up information. Uh, but for now, you know, kind of focusing a little bit more granular on the vendor information. Right? And I know the question you guys are asking is, hey, can I customize this? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you can go and you know, pull in the fields you want and create a custom drill too as well. Okay. And that's it. I mean, that's really the concept of building this. You know, if I wanted to do a um, instead just maybe a revenue and expense, uh, and I'll go and say, you know, change this to revenue, then go in here and say accounts. And instead of selecting all of them, maybe I want accounts that you know begin with four, which are my revenues good. Uh, copy and paste that. So copy, you know, paste, uh, and we'll say these are my expenses, right? And maybe those are accounts that uh, begin with five uh, or that begin with six. So again, you drag and drop, you know, or accounts and say begin with six. And I'll go in and pull all of those accounts. Okay? Change this, and we'll change this to say expenses. And this is, you know, if you have cost of goods sold or anything else, that's how you continue building this report, right? Copy and pasting, changing the row, and that's it. And then for my net income, that's just an Excel formula. And that's just saying, let's take all the revenues and subtract the expenses. And here, for your margin or anything like that, yeah, you can use percentages and so on. Okay? And now that we're done building this, uh, let's actually go and take a look at how this template looks like. So I'll actually bold it and italicize. Uh, now your business user goes in, you know, runs it, and we'll just keep it. Uh, keep these three. Keep actually four departments. Clicks run, uh, and now they can see you know P and L specific for every division. Um, so now we can see you know for zero zero here are all the revenues. Right here, are all the expenses, okay, with the desired net income. And administration, unfortunately, has no revenues, just expenses. 
Um, you know, accounting has no revenues, just expenses, um, and sales over here has all these expenses listed. All with the ability of going in, clicking, and drilling down and seeing the sub ledger. Okay. Yeah, that's how to build a very simple report. Um, now it's, hey, what else can you do with the software? And, and we have a lot of pre-built templates. And I'm just going to close out of here without saving. You know, these are all templates that you can use specific for GP to make the transition to uh, from MR to BI360 more seamless. Uh, I just picked out a few to show you. So I'll go and open up this uh, report where uh, you can go and see both your account receivable and payable. And you know, before I do that, just note all, the concept that I showed you where we built a report from finance, you can do with any of these modules, right? So we typically go in and just train you on you know, creating a P&L balance sheet. And then users are able to create their own sales reports, inventory, uh, whatever is relevant. And this example, I'll go, you know, select instead of department now, vendor. Um, and this is the asterisk, the wild card. So we'll select all customers, uh, run this. And what this does, uh, pretty nice here. You know, you can actually go and type in, um, you know, which, which account receivable or payable you want to find, and it'll show you the number. So if I go in here and say, you know, we have um, North, I think it's North Star is one of the vendors here. North Star, click this, right? And you can see the data here change okay, to show you the 207. If I want to see the numbers right here, here's the accounts payable aging. Click, I can see the vendor name, the due date, and the document date. If I look at the uh, receivable aging, and by the way, you can do buckets as well. Uh, it gives you the document date, the customers, and here's more than one, uh, the, the due date uh, for the transaction, the credit limit amount, um, and then you know my original, which is the current. A okay. few more just simple reports. This one is very useful, um, in my opinion. It's a reconciliation from account payable uh, to general ledger uh, because we have that ability to pulling in sub ledger in the same report something like this becomes extremely useful uh, I'll just pick all the vendors click a button and you know we see a list of all the account string uh, the descriptions here uh, the current amount and if I scroll down here uh, this is clearly a GL it goes in and pulls the vendors, the document numbers, um, the, you know, document date, doc amount, and so on, okay? Based on the vendor you pick, right? So click run, and now I'll filter just to show you that one vendor. A okay. few more before we uh, get in and show you how to deploy it. Here's an example uh, with buckets, like I mentioned. So, you know, if you want to see um, how it's aging by customer, here I put the posting. Um, you know, we'll take history and open. We'll take choose the customers, choose the ending doc date, and then it goes. Here's the customer name, document type, the doc number. Uh, we did some conditional formatting. Uh, nice functionality to have Excel, as you can put you know, conditional formatting to give you you know red stop lights if it's above a certain amount or a customer you know, has significant um, payables. So you can see here, you know, we put it in the aging buckets. Okay. Now, maybe here last, um, a lot of people do allocations, and allocations are really easy to use here. Uh, and what you'll see, and I'll show you a more illustrative example of this, everything you built in Excel, you can automate here. So the rule of thumb, if you can build it in Excel, yeah, you can do it. Uh, and here you pick your periods, you pick uh, which you know, department you want to see. So let's just you know pick this one right here, because uh, that's where all the data is in the Fabric Cam Test database. And we'll allocate to, you know, we'll, we'll see all of them. So you click, you know, and now you see uh, specifically the expenses in you know department. You can open this up in department zero. Okay, we're seven hundred twenty. You can open it up and see the full accounts, okay? And here's how you know it was allocated throughout. 
So you can see that here. Okay? So you can allocate it to the different departments. Let's go and open up. Um, this is great, you know, not only replacing management reporter, but also uh, giving you subledger. Let's go and show you, you know, kind of what else you can do. And to illustrate it, I'll go show you a site. This is where, by the way, you keep the templates um, if you're going to deploy everything in Excel as opposed to the web, which we'll look at subsequently. Um, you know, here you go and say, you know, here's, um, you know, here's all the templates we built. Now I'm going to take a look at budgeting and forecasting today, but just note that this is an option. Uh, but what we will do is go into this uh, decision pack because this is functionality that you'll get with reporting. And this is now more tailored to the finance uh, managers, right? Someone that needs to go in and actually evaluate how your business is running. And someone that doesn't want to spend hours in Excel piecemealing all this together. So now that we know how a template is built, right, we can see that nothing here is hard-coded. Sorry, clicked the wrong button there. Um, you know, if I look at receivables, it will automatically go in and give you your top 10 receivables. Your payments will automatically give you top uh, 10 vendor payments and so on, right? So nothing's hard-coded. Um, and the benefit of that, you know, if I look at this P&L uh, right here, nothing hard-coded. The benefit of that is as your data changes, it's going to roll into this news tab. So right now it says, you know, description sees modern improvement and period end doesn't really say anything, it's gibberish. And that's because you know, your business user goes in and says, well, you know, I wanna see this for corporate US, and I wanna see this for actual to budget, right? And I'll just keep September here as the month. Clicks a button, um, and based on those selections, the entire template, the board packet here, fills up with, info, with data, and as that data changes, uh, respectfully, all of the words are going to adjust accordingly. Um, so, you know, really in a matter of 15 seconds here, it went in now it says corporate U.S. sees great improvement um, in the month of September, right? Um, and I'm going to close this out. Shows you how profitable you were. It shows you your revenues, um, your customers, your top products, your accounts payable, and your receivables, right? If I scroll over here, uh, quick charts just in Excel, but useful because as your debt equity ratio, your current ratio changes, you don't have to go back and modify any of the charts. It gives you a trend analysis until September. Uh, P&L here, right? We kind of looked at it. Yeah, it expands on the row, uh, but it also expands on the column level. So because we picked up September and we clicked this, it gives you nine months of data. Needless to say, if we picked up October, it would give you 10 months. Uh, a cash flow statement, you know, balance sheet. Yeah, definitely things you can do in MR, but much more user-friendly in terms of building. Um, and you can add formatting, and you can drill back into Subledger. But also, right, here's things you clearly just even can't imagine doing in MR, like charting, um, sales information, where you click and see, hey, you know, I want to see the sales people, date they sold it, quantity, unit price. This could be maybe data that's coming from your CRM system, if you have one. Uh, payments, so top vendor payments, okay, and top um, 10 customer receivables. And going back into the trial balance example, if next month, you know, maybe Castle and Resort is no longer in the 10th place, there's another customer that supersedes the 70,053, that's now going to automatically appear here in the 10th place without you manually having to do anything. And that's kind of, you know, the point of this. And next month, instead of uh, recreating something, your manager goes in and says, great, I like it. I want to click a button. Um, and now, you know, uh, hopefully here if um, the words are going to change, if our performance changed at all based on, on the numbers and these other tabs. Um, and it actually, a little, little delay here in the GoTo meeting. Um, they actually did. So it says, you know, corporate U.S. sees weak decline in October, right? And now, if I look at, um, 
in our cash flow, that's for October, balance sheet for October, and p &L says now October, and like I said, it gives you 10 months instead of nine. And this row expanding column concept, by the way, doesn't have to be for period. Uh, it could be for department, division, you know, whatever's relevant to you. Okay. Now, I want to pause here for a sec. Um, there are going to be a few ways now, you know, you're done building this to deploy. And let's now take a look and say, good, I love the tool. I'm, I'm, uh, now I want to think through how are people going to receive all this great stuff that I built. And it's the following. You could use our tool um, called the publisher. And what that does, I'm actually not going to go through it in detail. Uh, what it does, I'll just talk about it. It automatically um, sends out reports to end users. Um, so if you want to you know, save money on buying licenses, you just schedule and say, I want certain people to receive um, you know, reports at a certain time, and the system automatically emails out to them uh, and saves to a folder. Okay? And of course, it manages security. So it'll only give them the specific department and so on uh, that they select. And by the way, that is actually a concept that I, I should, have measured, should have mentioned. All of this is based on security. So if I'm an exec and I you know, can only see corporate Asia and corporate US, that's going to be the only thing I'll be able to see. And that security can get as granular as um, you know, account, journal entry, and so on. So if I'm running this and I'm limited to you know, just seeing my revenues and not expenses, great. That's going to be the only thing I'll be able to see. Second option of deployment, you know, we looked at it. Yes, you could deploy it, like I said, um, via that publisher, which automatically sends out templates. You know, you could just say, hey, you open Excel, you click a button, um, and you, you know, see all the templates here. Or option three, and this is something that's by far the most popular option, you deploy it on the web portal. And that's uh, where you go in and say, you know, upload this report to the portal. You know, go ahead and save it. Um, and now it gets pushed up to um, the portal. And let's take a look at how that looks and feels. So switch gears a little bit, you know, and we took a look at this part, which is building reports um, from Great Plains, right? I showed you that we built a uh, trial balance. Then I showed you a few more templates that we already have designed, um, how they're executed. Now we want to switch gears a little bit and take a look at, hey, you know, how do I view all this stuff on the web? And that's where put yourself now maybe in the position of a uh, power user. Okay? Excuse me, I apologize for that. End user, uh, the person uh, just viewing the data. And I'm going to log in here with my credentials. And this is very important because, again, the security that you set up in one place in BI360 is carried across all these applications. And I'll log in. And by the way, we have about 14 different verticals. And I saw you know, on the on the registrar's list, there's a lot of not-for-profits. Uh, so for you, you know, you'd go in and we have very specific templates. And this now I'm logging in, you know, just our uh, demo template. And here's the, as example the not-for-profit where we have specific um, you know, membership, grants, examples, and so on, both of reports, dashboards, and budgeting templates. Okay. So I'll go back and go into Corp Corp. Okay. And immediately what I see, you, know, you can customize the view here. Um, you can customize the background. I'll just keep it you know, as this right now. And, you know, great, I have all the templates that either I uploaded or someone upload on my behalf. And what I like to do here is toggle certain things as favorites. And that's advantageous because I can go in here, right, and see the ones that are most relevant to me. The, so the point is you're not going all over the place in Excel looking for this stuff. It's right here. Uh, then I know there's someone in the back saying, oh, actually, no, I don't want them to give the, have that flexibility. I want to control the way they consume all of this. So right here, you know, um, there's we've created strategy and initiatives from a high level. Point is, this is the budgeting really, but you can push data back 
as opposed to keeping it somewhere in a PowerPoint, a board, or a document. Um, you can create your forecast, complex modeling, as well as forecasting the rest of the year. Um, you know, you can view some of your budgets, input data, full workflow, uh, which you can create with your reports too. If you want to see who opened the reports and what, you know, and when they opened them and what they ran them for. Uh, and right underneath it, if you want to view actual to budget reports, knowing that you now budget in the software, you can do that here. Okay. But what I want to do is skip through this a bit. Uh, we're not, again, fo we're going to focus on the budget and forecasting piece next week uh, very extensively. And I want to switch and just worry about reporting now. So I'll skip over these dashboards. Uh, maybe just come back and show you a quick one after. Uh, you automatically actually get these dashboards for free. Uh, with the portal. Uh, so what I will do though is I'll skip and show you some of the reports. Okay? So you have your sales report, receivable, payable, uh, anything you do that Excel sheet, you, know, you go in and you now can view on the portal. And the way it looks for an end user, right, they go and say, oh, I want to see this profit and loss instead of Excel. This is now the deployment methodology we chose. Uh, you go in and say, all right, well, I want to see it for this company. Okay, I want to see it for this month. Oh, sorry about that, internet speed. Um, you know, I want to see it for this month, and I want to see it for actual compared to budget. Um, expand it out a bit, and now I see it for corporate U.S. Um, for the month of September, right, with its revenue and expenses. And you now know that, hey, if you add a new account, say you add account 40015 in your ERP system, you know that all your user has to do is click this button, and now they'll automatically see that account. Okay? And that's kind of the benefit. Uh, you know, what is kind of funny, we built this tool, and we were like, wow, this is a web portal, this is great, no one's going to use Excel to run reports. And immediately the first question we got asked was, can you push this back into Excel? <laughs> Uh, so we actually created a button here. Uh, what you can do is share. And we have mobile apps in both in Google Play and in the Apple Store for this. There's a QR reader. Uh, but what I will do, which I think is really practical, is I'll go and say, you know, we'll say testing P&L. Um, um, yeah. And then now when I save it to my desktop, uh, maybe you're getting on a plane, right? You don't have internet anymore. And what you want to do is now evaluate this P&L. You go back into your Excel, and you see the exact same template uh, that was illustrated on the web right inside of Excel. And another very nice feature is maybe right before month end, you know your product revenue is going to be $1 million. When I click Enter, all of the data here will change. And that's because all the formulas here that were originally created in Excel were retained in this spreadsheet. Okay. And now you know why, right? Because we originally created it in Excel. And you're probably saying this is fantastic, but what if I do want to run it for a different company or a different month? Exact same concept as you saw in Excel from the end user perspective. Uh, they go in and now they say, you know, I want to run it for... Uh, and this is where security kicks in. So if I'm limited to just corporate Asia and corporate Canada, only two companies I'll be able to see. Uh, also, you know, I kind of showed you how inside of the trial balance, we created this for uh, division instead of company. So same thing, right? These are all just samples. You'll be able to customize like I started off the presentation with. I'll show corporate Asia, and it's no longer September, and it's now October. Click a button. Uh, and now I get brand new information based on that. So now it's Corporate Asia, October, uh, with its own revenues and expenses. All with the ability, same as in Excel, to drill in both the detail, which I already showed you, and the summary, right? So very powerful. And by the way, you can toggle between the different um, companies here. And if you're you know, saying, hey, it's performance, performance, up here, you can actually run multiple versions of this. So you can go in here. These reports are quick to run, but you can say, great, run this one, run this one. Um, and as it renders, it'll just you know, go into this archive and then populate with data as it registers. So 
you can run multiple versions of this. And you know what is funny though, I show this, and I, I did see on the registration list there are some uh, CFOs in the room. The CFOs always say, "Great, I got the numbers, but the senior execs want to see those dashboards." What's nice is you're looking maybe at your revenues and expenses, and you actually want to see something that illustrates that. Uh, well, right below, you know, you can go in and see. Uh, here's a dashboard. You know, it gives you your revenue by companies, your key expenses, your capital purchases, liquidity, you know, receivable and payable. You can again manage them by parameters. Make this a little bigger. Um, and the point here, you can interact with them. So if I care about this company, click, and I see you know, all of the data here change. And you know, a lot of the visualization tools, the conversation kind of ends here. You know, you look at it, and yeah, this is an outlier: computer equipment leasing systems. That's it. With us, you now can see. All right, well, now let me look at the numbers behind it. Right? Let me look at an actual uh, receivable report. And now you can see a template okay? with all the data, with the transactions. Um, and if I did want to, we have integrations with all the ma major document management systems for um, Great Plains. Uh, or you can create a hyperlink, but you, know, you can go in and automatically see the invoice here. Okay? So, you know, pretty powerful stuff here. And last thing, by the way, I uh, definitely don't want to spend too much time focusing on this today, but you know, just know as a phase two or three, uh, you can add full budgeting. And here you can add you know, your, your personnel data um, inside. You can do your operational budgeting template. Uh, and you know, we'll focus on this next week. But it is really important because when you're thinking of, hey, yeah, let's replace management reporter. What do I do? You know, it's really prudent on your part, I think, to to build to take a solution that scales, uh, because then as your other requirements come up, well, you can draw in BI three six as a phase two or three. Whereas, you know, if you do just a replacement for MR, and then you either grow or someone complains about budgeting and you have to look for a tool, well, now it's going to be an entire process uh, because you have to figure out how they integrate, and it's going to become a technical thing again. Um, or, you know, we come in in a lot of cases where we just basically replace a lot of the tools and then companies are, you know, upset they didn't see BI360 earlier because they spent money on a different reporting tool. Um, you know, here, again, you parameters. Uh, and by the way, you can send this out to users so they automatically get it for their parameters. You can also send it out to users here so it you know, automatically registers for uh, the period. And the point here, this is a budgeting template, really simple for next year's operation, actual and forecast for comparison. All of this is coming from systems now. Okay? So there's no links in Excel being used at all. Um, you know, here, the personnel, I kind of started showing this to you, but this is coming from another form. Um, and what you're doing here is, you know, yeah, you could just type numbers and store data, uh, or you can do something such as uh, going in and you know, right-clicking and saying, uh, for audit and accounting, we actually want to take the history of that account, click apply, spreads it for you based on seasonality, um, and you know it wants to. We want to increase it by eight percent. Click this button, and now um, it applies that increase here. Uh, you know, maybe for legal, you want to add some line item details. So, which attorneys do we spend money on, or something like that? Um, you can do that right below here, right? So, Loeb and Loeb firm um, add data here right, and then continue doing that you know other firm okay. you can add notes so comments and um, you know this firm is used for transactional right and you click okay and that's it that's the budgeting component um, point is now you know your users can drill in you can save that data now back into that data warehouse and you can manage workflow to see who input data. Okay. For the last um, few minutes we have, I want to show you just one last tool. Um, but before I do that, let's kind of summarize this one more time. You know, this is what we looked at, which has reports, both live from GP. Okay, um, if you're combining other data sources, the warehouse, uh, and you know the dashboard component you get for free, and then budgeting if it's a good fit. Great, you can immediately implement. 
if that's something that you know is maybe a phase two or three perfect right you'll pay for that when when you get there but just know you could grow into it last tool and then I'll wrap it up um, for questions and this is uh, you know, I'm sure a lot of you guys use smart list or smart builder um, inside of Great Plains this is just a tool that uh, is kind of similar and I look at it as kind of a smart list on um, you know on steroids really powerful um, and this is you know, really all of what I'm showing yeah you can do with our Excel add-in but this is quicker so if you just want quick answer right like who do we pay last month or uh, how are our revenues trending or expenses trending for one specific department or account during the past three months this is a tool that will you know let you answer that in a few seconds really simple to use and here you can see same modules as what we saw when we built out the report in Excel um, you know three concepts you drag and drop data into the white space step one step two you filter the data by putting it in the blue space and step three you organize the data so we spend a lot of time in finance so maybe I'll go into purchasing um, and here we'll go into transactions um, you know we'll put in vendor I'm double clicking it you can drag and drop to uh, we'll put the vendor name, maybe the document date, document number, due date, um, and we'll keep it simple for now, and document amount, and then maybe just the date, right? Uh, so we'll put that in. If we refresh it, this gives us all of the data in the database. Okay? But we don't want all of it. We don't want 2013 here. Um, you know, we don't want 2017. Maybe we just want the first few months of 2014. So step two, you filter the data. Drag and drop. You select uh, the lookup. And you go and say, great, you know, I want to see the first you know, five months here. Click OK. Refresh. Okay. And now it filters to just give you data for 2014. Okay. But you, know, you don't want to kind of scroll down here. You want to see the months side by side, right? So what you can do is right click, expand, and it actually gives you the months side by side with data. Okay. Um, you know, and cust this is the third concept, right, which was organized. You can group the vendors here, you can add you know, totals, uh, and that's it, right? Now you can have it grouped by vendor, you can see how it's trending the months. Okay. I mean, very powerful tool. Uh, and everything else, by the way, is just an iteration of the same concepts. Uh, so maybe I want to go in and you know group it. Let me delete the vendor and do it by um, the ven expand on the column by the vendor. Great, I see all of them, but I don't care about all of them. I just want to see a few vendors side by side. Um, drag and drop, click the vendor. You know, very straightforward. Maybe I'll just select a few of these guys. Click OK, refresh. Okay, and now I just see those vendors. And after I'm done with this, by the way, I could save it inside of this uh, reporting application. Um, I could transport it into Excel, right, normal Excel, into a PDF uh, or the report designer if I want to continue building it and turn it into a full um, input. Right? So I'll click Next, click Finish here, um, you know, and now when I run it, you know, report was successfully exported. I can open it up. Um, and now exact same template except in Excel where I can add some formatting, right? And that's the power of this is everything's nicely connected. Um, so we've really been thoughtful about building all these applications so they work hand in hand together. You know, everything we just saw on the web except now in Excel. And that's where now you can deploy it in Excel, or you can go in here and push that report up to the portal. Click this button, where now your user um, can just access it via the web. Okay. So really what I want to do now is pause for a sec, um, read off some of the, the questions I got and answer them. And I know we're <laughs> running a little bit short on time, um, so I'm just going to go ahead and kind of read them off here. Um, and, let me see. 
So the first question is, you know, um, can you use conditional formatting functions when building templates? Uh, yeah, and I think that was probably asked uh, a little earlier, but absolutely any conditional formatting you can use in Excel, uh, you can use here. And it transfers over to the web. Um, then the uh, second question here is, uh, can we uh, can we load other data sources? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and you know that's kind of a little beyond just the replacing MR component, uh, which we've priced out specifically to be extremely attractive, so it's an easy replacement. Uh, but you know what you could do, any data source, you can load into that data warehouse. Um, and then you can uh, view it on the web. Next question is, um, do you handle uh, consolidations? Yes, um, absolutely. We handle um, consolidations, uh, eliminations, and allocations, uh, if, if you have that. And the consolidating piece, we can both do live from Great Plains. Um, and we can do from you know the the, the sub ledger uh, as well. And then next question is, can you integrate with analytical accounting? Uh, really good question. We definitely can do live reporting from analytical accounting, uh, but because the table is enormous in Great Plains, we do recommend to push that data now into the data warehouse because it kind of gives you an opportunity um, to cleanse it which, you know, the, with the AA tables, with the size of it, it's, it's really helpful when you push it into the warehouse. Oh, we're getting, we're getting good questions here. Um, yeah, the next part, and, and hopefully I kind of reiterate this a few times, uh, but, you know, do you have to buy the entire solution? Uh, no, absolutely not. You know, this session is really meant for replacing management reporter, um, and it's priced around users and modules so needless to say replacing the um, you know MR piece would be really quick um, you know and that'd be a much lower in both software and implementation cost uh, then maybe great you know you scale you, you grow into the solution you start using it for MR replacement then maybe you add some da other data sources and purchase the warehouse it's a phase two um, and then phase three is um, you know maybe add budgeting, forecasting, and so on. Uh, next question is: Do you handle custom tables in GP? Yeah, if you have a custom table um, or another ISV in, into GP, uh, we actually have a tool. It's called the Metadata Designer, which you can join uh, SQL views right for the technical folks, um, and then you know, add joins. And the, the business user now, you know, they don't really care about that, but they'll be able to report off custom modules. Um, and you know, I know we have about a minute left here. Uh, so just know, you know if you enjoy what you saw today, we'll, we'll, um, please reach out. And here's uh, contact information. Uh, we'll um, make, assess some of your needs, chat with you about your requirements. Uh, and we do have, you know, plenty of verticals, so we can show you examples that are more tailored to you, uh, and have an interactive demonstration. Uh, you know, if uh, you're interested in much more than just the replacing MR piece, uh, please join us for the webinar uh, next week, same time on budgeting and forecasting. And last thing, I just want to thank everyone for joining me on on, on Friday. Um, you know, I had a very good time presenting to you. And thank you, FMT, uh, for letting us showcase the solution. So, Olivia, is there anything else you wanted to add before we wrapped up? Yeah, awesome. Thanks, Alex, for that. We really appreciate you taking the time to present to, uh, to everyone here. Um, just a quick note, we'll be uh, following up with all the attendees after this, and also we'll be sending a, a copy of this webinar to all of you as well. So. Yeah, I think that about wraps it up. Thanks again, Alex, and thank you everyone for attending, and we hope you have a great day.